Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another WIST technology tutorial. In today's lesson, I'm going to be talking about one of the new features in Google Classroom. Most of you have probably seen this by now, but if you've logged into Classroom recently and have gone over to uh, download all of the grades, you'll see now you have an option to copy all grades to Google Sheets. Now, when I first saw this, immediately I'm thinking, oh my goodness, there's so many possibilities um, now with that. So the idea I had in mind was to revisit this idea of a Google Sheets gradebook that is accessible uh, to my students on a row by row basis. In other words, the students can only see the grades that are available for them and not the entire class. So I, I, I wanted to create sort of a twist to this tutorial I had produced back in May um, using the new Google Sheet copy of the Google Classroom grades. So this can save you a lot of time um, setting this up. So if you haven't watched this yet, um, I highly recommend that you do take a look at some of the concepts that are in here because I won't be going into as much detail as I did in this particular uh, tutorial. So let's move forward now. So when you do when you do select copy all grades to Google Sheets, you get a Google Sheet that looks just like this. Um, uh, it's pretty plain and simple. It does the auto calculation of the percentages, so on and so forth. So my task was to get this information uh, to my kids without creating a whole lot of extra work for me. Now, so step one was simply to create a, a new Google Sheet, um, and that's what I have over here. And I needed to first deposit the roster, my class roster, into this sheet. Now this step would not be necessary if the export came with the student email address. Um, I could completely bypass this step if we had the email address in here, and I suggest um, submitting feedback. I've already done that to request that the email address be one of the fields uh, in this particular export. But anyway, we don't have it now. So a workaround is to use this fine add-on called Roster Sync uh, Teacher Edition. And what this will do is you can basically populate and keep synchronized a, a Google Sheet with your uh, classroom roster. And this will populate it with the student first name, last name, email address, and then, of course, their status in the classroom. So this is important. Then the next step is to create another tab, which is down here. And I've color coded this for a reason, um, just to help me explain things. So where you see yellow, these are things that I've just manually inputted um, that aren't going to change. Um, and these simply have to do with the way my awesome table works. And again, to learn more about awesome tables and grade books, definitely go back and check this video out. So that's the yellow ones. So these are manually inputted. I have where you see orange, these are actually some functions. So in E1, all this is, is a simple query that is populating my headers with the names of the assessments. So you can see right here by reading this query, E4 to 4, that's from here to here. So that means each time I add a new assessment, I'm essentially creating a new header um, because my awesome tables needs headers to work. In E2, I have this function um, which is not totally necessary. If I wanted to, um, I could just keep writing no filter in as the assessments grow, but by having this function, um, every time there's a new assessment, the only thing I need to do is just drag over this box and it'll create, it'll add the words no filter um, into the cell. And this will become clear once you see the awesome table as to why you want to have no filter there. Now, 
the most interesting part of all this is in B3, okay? Notice this is the import range function. What this is doing is taking the data from your Google Classroom gradebook, which is the Google Sheet right here. It's taking this data and putting it into this one. So notice this is my spreadsheet key. So it's importing a range from this key. I'm getting this from this, OK? Now, one thing you do want to keep in mind is that with each new assessment, your range is also increasing. So if, I'm, if I am up to column H and I have a new assignment, column I will be included in my next sort of Google Sheet of grades. So I have to be sure that my gradebook will accommodate up to column I in order to be complete. So those are really the only two things I'm concerned with when I'm updating this gradebook. So the last step, which I haven't shown you yet, is getting these emails into e the emails from the roster into the gradebook. And I'm doing this with an array formula. And what this does is it's looking up, as you can see here, columns, column B from B7 onward. It's going to look down here. This is the last name column. So this is my, my search term. If this student has a last name of one, um, it's going to come back over to here and say, OK, here is a student with the last name of one. And if we further explore that formula, we're going to see it has an index of two. So basically, it says, OK, I want you to bring back the second index of that lookup, meaning the second column, essentially. So it's so looking down here. It finds the last name of one, and it's bringing over the second index. So that's how I am bringing in the email addresses into the gradebook as well. So then I went ahead and built my uh, I inserted the awesome table gadget into the Google site. And again, that's explained in, in the video how to do that. Um, and you'll notice it displays just, I'll click it right here, just like this. And your instinct may be to say, oh, it's broken. It doesn't work. Well, this is actually a good sign because Remember, I've, I've set this up to display the data only for the user who's logged in. Well, I'm logged in as the teacher, so of course I'm not seeing anything in here. I'm not a student in my own class. But if we are looking at a student, we can see that their grades are visible. So, And just to prove to you that this is not some other separate Google site, I'm going to copy this URL, and I'm going to paste it right into here. It'll refresh, and there you have it. So let's just make note of, of some of the grades in here, because I'm going to show you how I would then update this. So right now, we have a total of roughly 80 seven percent this is like a, a total grade for student one okay so say i go back to my classroom and i've updated the grades and i need to update my online gradebook as well well here i would simply do copy all grades to a sheet now i have Notice how there's some new data. Actually, there were some assignments that were missing. I just removed some numbers from the assessments. So, and we can see student one is now down to a 51% grade. So in order to get this to reflect on my Google site, all I need to do is copy the spreadsheet key. And I can go to my gradebook right here. And I'm going to replace this with the new key. And it's going to kick back an error um, the first time. 
because you have to authorize access to that Google Sheet. So that's easily correctable. You just simply hover over the error there and click Allow Access. And in a moment, you'll see that the new data is available on this sheet. And even better, the next time a student checks the online gradebook, their information has also been updated. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, the concept here presented to you of maintaining your Google Classroom gradebook in a Google Sheet now that you can actually copy all the grades to a Google Sheet. So this is just one strategy for making that information available to your students and only to the students who are logged in. Thanks for watching. Bye.